Good morning. My name is Evelyn Craighead, a slave, a servant of Jesus Christ. And I would like to welcome you to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny, a ministry that uncompromisingly teaches the truth of God's word. And our scripture teaching this morning comes from 2 John chapter 1, and I will be reading verses 5 through 6 from the New King James Version. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. My subject for this morning is the commandment of love. There's no question about it that what the world needs more than anything else is love. Yeah. If people loved each other, mm -hmm. I mean, if we really loved each other, yeah. there would be no war, mm -hmm. crime, abuse, injustice, poverty, hunger, starvation, homelessness, deprivation, mm -hmm. or sexual immorality. Amen. Love is the one ingredient that could revolutionize society. And love is the greatest quality of human life. Yes. Love is the supreme quality. As a matter of fact, it's the most excellent way for mm. us to live. If we look at the word plead in verse 5, it means to urge, mm. beseech, beg, pray. The idea is urgency and necessity. Yes. It's an absolute necessity. And so John is saying it's urgent. But... What is the urgency and necessity? Mm -hmm. And it's love. We must love one another. Amen. And for believers, true, genuine believers, mm -hmm. love is not an option. Believers must love one another. Amen. And two things are being said. Love is not a new commandment. Mm -hmm. And love is a behavior, a way of life, a walk. In the Greek, the word used for love is agape. And the meaning of agape love is more clearly seen by contrasting it with the various kinds of love. And there are essentially four kinds of love. Okay. Whereas the English language has the word love to describe all of our affectionate experiences, the Greek language has a different word to describe each kind of love. Amen. First is passionate love or eros love. This is the physical love between the sexes, the patriotic love of a person for his nation, and the ambition of a person for power, wealth, or fame. Mm -hmm. To put it briefly, eros love is the base love of a person that occurs from his own, that occurs from his own passion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes eros love is focused on good, and at other times it's focused on bad, but eros love is never used in the New Testament. Second is affectionate love or storage love. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of love that exists between parent and child and between local loyal citizens and a trustworthy ruler. And storage love isn't used in the New Testament either. Third is an endearing love, the love that cherishes. This is filial love. Mm. It's the love that a husband and a wife have for each other. Mm. A love of a brother for a brother or a love for that a friend has for the dearest of friends. It's the love that cherishes. It's the kind of love that holds someone or something ever so dear to your heart. Fourth is selfless and sacrificial love, mm -hmm. or agape love. Amen. And agape love is the love of the mind, the love of reason. It's love of the will. It's the love that goes so far that it loves a person even if the person doesn't deserve to be loved. Amen. It's the love that goes so far that it actually loves the person who utter, who's utterly unworthy of being mm. loved. But there's something significant about agape love. Selfless 
or agape love is the love of God. It's the very love that's possessed by God himself. Amen. It's the love of God that was demonstrated on the cross of Christ. It's the love of God for the ungodly. It's the love of God for unworthy sinners. Mm -hmm. It's the love of God for undeserving enemies. And selfless or agape love is a gift of God. Amen. But it can only be experienced <clears throat> if you know God personally. Only It can only be experienced if you have received the love of God in your heart and life. Amen. And agape love has to be shed abroad. It has to be poured out, flooded, and spread about by the Spirit of God that's in your heart. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. According to the Lord Jesus Christ, selfless or agape love is the greatest thing in all of life. Amen. And according to scripture, selfless or agape love is the greatest possession and gift in human life. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 says, and now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Scripture says, and now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to mm -hmm. you, but that which we have heard from the beginning, <clears throat> that we love one another. Yeah. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Love is not a new commandment. It's the old commandment. <clears throat> it's the very same commandment we had from the beginning. But notice how John immediately brings up the subject of love. And this tells us something. It tells us that a dear friend of John was having problems with some people. That some people were mistreating her Lord and her. And we know from the next passage of scripture that there were some false teachers who wanted to teach in her church or else they wanted <clears throat> to use her house for some purpose. They wanted to visit her and talk to her about their beliefs. They wanted to room and board in her house and they wanted to use her house for a church, a study group, or for a church social function. And evidently she had refused to grant their request mm. and as a result she was being criticized. Whatever the case, she had actually refused to open her home to false teachers, or else John was instructing her not to welcome them. In either case, this dear lady was under attack by some in the church. She was being criticized, murmured against, talked about, hurt, mistreated, and abused. But notice John's exhortation to her. He was urging her to love them, and we must love one another. Mm -hmm. No matter what they say about us, no matter how they mistreat us, no matter how they hurt us, we must love them. The point is this. Love is the very first commandment mm -hmm. that we ever received from God, mm -hmm. and it's the very first commandment that we ever received from Christ. It's even the first commandment that we receive when we become a believer. As a matter of fact, love is the first commandment of the church. And God said from the beginning that we are to love our neighbor. Amen. And Jesus Christ proclaimed that love would be the distinctive mark of his followers. The very mark that would show the world that a person was a true follower of his. John chapter 13 verse 35 says, By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. But notice another fact about this dear lady of God. She was being exhorted, urged, and encouraged to love those who were mistreating her. Mm. She wasn't being told to love her friend but not her enemy. She wasn't being told to love the good but not the bad. She wasn't being told to love the righteous but not the sinner. She wasn't being told to love the acceptable but not the unacceptable. She wasn't being told to love the friendly but not the abusive. She wasn't even being told to love the person that's kind but not the person who's a criticizer. And this is a totally new concept of love mm. because yeah. we have always felt that we are to love our friends. We've always felt free to take others, especially those who have mistreated us and mistreat them, ignore them, strike back at them, mm. neglect them, criticize them, hate them, be unkind to them, and hurt them. But John says, no. 
And he instructs not only this dear friend to love those who mistreated her, but he also instructs us. But how can we possibly love those who mistreat us? Well, and there's only one way. We must love as God loves. Amen. We must possess the love of God in our hearts and lives. Scripture says this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Love is a behavior, a way of life, a walk. It's obeying God's commandments. Amen. Notice the phrase, this is love, in verse 6. Love is obedience. That is, the only way we can show that we love God is by doing what pleases God. Mm -hmm. And when we love someone, we want to do things that please him and her. Yes. We want their acceptance and approval, and we want them to love us in return. Therefore, we are careful to do things that will please them to win their favor and love. And the same is true with us and God. Amen. If we love God, we do those things that please him. We keep his commandments. But what is his commandment? And the great commandment, the commandment that you've heard from the beginning, is that you should walk in love. Amen. But how does a believer walk in love? And you walk on this earth just like Christ walked loving everyone. You do the great acts of love that are clearly spelled out in scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 7. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in truth. Bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. But before we rush to trivialize these words about love by assuming that they can easily fit us, mm -hmm. let's stop to consider they, that they actually describe God's character. Amen. These aren't sweet and sentimental claims. They are hard-edged descriptions of God's perfection in relationship. The Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle to write a breathtakingly beautiful description mm. of the nature of God, and only God can put his character in us. Amen. And this great passage of Scripture gives us, the believer, the very behavior that's to be char characterized and how we are to live among others. And loving others means that love suffers long. It means that love is patient with people. And love always refers to being patient with people, not with circumstances. Mm. Love suffers a long, long time, no matter the evil and injury done to you by someone. And no matter how much you're neglected or ignored by a loved one, mm -hmm. you still love. Amen. And love suffers a long, long time without resentment, anger, or by seeking revenge. Love controls itself in order to win the person over and to help him to live, work, and serve as he should. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5 verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Love is kind, is courteous, good, helpful, and useful. It's giving. It's showing and showering favors. Yes. Love doesn't resent evil, and it doesn't revel in the hurt and neglect that's done to others. Instead, love reaches out in kindness, in helpfulness, in giving and in showering favors mm. on the person who neglects or hurts you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God and Christ forgave you. Amen. Love does not envy, love is not jealous, and love doesn't have feelings of envy against others because of what they have, such as gifts, position, friends, recognition, possessions, popularity, or abilities. Mm -hmm. Love doesn't begrudge, attack, or downplay the abilities and success of others. Amen. Love shares joy and rejoices in the experience and good of others. Love doesn't flaunt itself. Love isn't boastful. Love doesn't brag or seek recognition, mm -hmm. honor, or applause from others. On the contrary, love seeks to give. Love seeks to recognize, honor, and applaud the other person. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or deceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each 
esteem others better than himself. Love isn't puffed up. Love isn't prideful, arrogant, or conceited. And love doesn't think or act as though you are better or above others. Love is modest and humble. And love recognizes and honors others. Amen. Love doesn't behave itself unseemingly, unbecomingly, rudely, indecently, unmannerly, or disgracefully. Love does nothing to shame you. Love is orderly and controlled. Mm. It's behaving and treating all people with respect, honoring and respecting who they are. Philippians chapter 1 verse 10 says that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Love doesn't seek her own. Love isn't selfish. And love doesn't insist on its own way. Mm -hmm. Love isn't focused on who they are or on, on what they've done. Love seeks to serve others, not to have others serving him. Love is acknowledging others, not insisting that others acknowledge you. Mm -hmm. It's giving to others, not insisting that others give to you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4 says, Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Love isn't easily provoked, it isn't easily angered, it doesn't readily take offense, it isn't quick-tempered, it isn't touchy, it isn't easily aroused to anger, and it doesn't become exasperated. It doesn't become infuriated, annoyed, enraged, irritated, or frustrated. Wow. Love controls its emotions. Yes. It never becomes angry without a cause. Love doesn't think evil. It doesn't consider the wrong suffered. It isn't resentful. And it doesn't hold on to the evil done to oneself. Love suffers the evil done to it and forgets it. First Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. It doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness, evil, or wrongdoing. Love doesn't take pleasure in the unrighteousness and sin of others. It doesn't feed on sin and wrong, mm -hmm. and neither does it pass along the stories of sin and wrong. Yes. Too often, our nature is fed the tragedy of evil, whether it be our own personal sin or a natural disaster that covers the daily news reports, which are most subjects of conversation between so many people. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8 says, And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Amen. Love rejoices in the truth. It rejoices when the truth is known and when the truth prevails. Love rejoices when others are recognized and promoted for who they are and for mm. what they have contributed. And love rejoices when the truth is rooted and grounded in a person and among the people of the world. Yeah. The point to notice is that love never covers nor hides the truth. Love is courageous in that it faces the truth. And believe me, it takes courage. Amen. Malachi chapter 2 verse 6 says, The law of truth was in his mouth, and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and turned many away from iniquity. Love bears all things, and the word bears means to cover all things and to hold or stand up under all things. Mm -hmm. And love does both, standing under the weight and onslaught of all things and covering up the faults of others. Mm -hmm. Love has no pleasure in exposing the wrongs and weaknesses of others. Love bears up under any neglect, abuse, or ridicule. It stands up to anything that's thrown against it. Colossians 3 verse 13 says, Bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Love believes all things. Love is completely trusting. Love is always eager to believe the best. And love is always ready to believe the best. Love sees and understands the circumstances and accepts, forgives, and believes the very best about a person. Mm. Luke 17 verse 4 says, And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Love hopes all things, and it never stops hoping. Mm. It expects the good to eventually triumph and to gain the victory. Love just refuses to accept failure. Amen. Love always hopes for the best. It always hopes for the ultimate triumph of the good. 
No matter how fallen or how tragic the fall or how difficult gaining the victory may seem. Romans 15 verse 4 says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Love endures all things, and the word endures is a military word, mm. meaning to stand against the attack of an enemy. And love actively fights and endures all attacks. Amen. Love is strong. It's full of fortitude and fight. And it struggles against any and every assault just to keep from being unloving. And love always conquers and triumphs yeah. because it endures all things. Matthew chapter 10 verse 22 says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. No matter what attacks love, named or unnamed, it endures the attack and continues to love. Mm. And so the point is well made. The dear friend of John was to walk in love, no matter how others treated her. She was to love even as God's son loved when he was on earth, and so are we. Very simply, John wanted the elect lady and her family to love one another, and this appeal to applies to us as well. Amen. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. But John wrote that it wasn't a new commandment. So is this a contradiction? The commandment, love one another, certainly isn't new in time because even the Old Testament Jews were instructed to love their neighbors and the strangers within their gates. Deuteronomy 10 verse 19 says, Therefore love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. But with the coming of God's Son to earth, this commandment is new in emphasis and new in example. Yes. But it was Jesus Christ who gave this commandment new emphasis to brotherly love, and he exemplified it in his own life. It's also new in experience, because as believers, we have the Holy Spirit of God living within us, enabling us to obey, and the fruit of the Spirit is love. But is it possible to command love? Mm. And the answer is yes when you understand what Christian love really is. Mm -hmm. Many people have the mistaken idea that Christian love is a feeling that it's a special kind of religious emotion that makes us reach out and accept others. And certainly emotion is involved, mm -hmm. but basically Christian love is an act of the will. Yes. It simply means that you treat other people the same way God treats you. Mm. In fact, it's possible to love people that we really don't like. And so we may not always be able to will our affections, but we can will our attitudes and actions. Yes. When people are rude to us, we can be kind in return. When people persecute us, we can pray for them. And when the opportunity comes, we can do good to them. However, if we follow our feelings, we would probably retaliate. Mm. But if we ask the Holy Spirit to control our wills, then we can act toward them as Jesus would have acted. In Christian love and when John and John went on to explain that love and obedience must go together however it's impossible to divorce our relationship with God from our relationship with people mm. if we say we love God but we hate our brother then we can be sure that we really don't love God Amen. first John chapter 4 verse 20 says if someone says I love God and hates his brother he is a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has never seen? If we obey God, then his love is perfected in us, and we have no problem, no problem loving our brother. Mm -hmm. As you review this passage of scripture, there are three things that blend truth, love, and obedience. Amen. It's by believing the truth of Christ and his word that we are saved. Mm -hmm. And the evidence of that salvation is love and obedience. And love and obedience are strengthened as we grow in our knowledge of the truth. Yes. We speak the truth in love and we obey God's commandments because we love him. Thus obedience enables us to learn more truth. And the more truth we learn, the more we love Jesus Christ, who is truth. Amen. And instead of living in a vicious circle, we can live a in a victorious circle of love, truth, and obedience. Amen. And so love isn't a new commandment. It's a behavior, a way of life. It's a walk. And John stressed love 
and this should be the calling card of every true, genuine believer. And surely John was remembering the upper room teaching of Jesus that love was the primary way the world would recognize his disciples. John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35 says, The new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It's easy to be a nice person and maintain the trappings of spirituality. But loving unlovable people takes supernatural help. Yes. No wonder people sit up and take notice. Trust the Lord today for the capacity to love all those he has put in your life. And ask God to not only live in you, mm. but to love through you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, we once again thank you for your word, a powerful word. Help us to love like you've loved us. That's the only way to love. Your love, Father God, is a love that isn't known by the world. And it can only be experienced when we accept your son Jesus and love and obey him. Thank you for loving us first, Father God, to show us what real love is. And thank you for teaching us today how to walk in it, mm. to obey your commandments out of our love for you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in us, for us, and through us. And we ask that your will be done in our lives, that no matter who we meet today, that we will love like your son Jesus has loved us. Amen. Amen.